I am Linda Finn, I'm the Service Manager and Lead for Violence Against Women and Girls for the Safeguarding Team in Sutton and Merton Community Services, which is part of the Royal Marsden NHS Foundation Trust. We know that for approximately a third of women, the actual domestic abuse or violence will start with a pregnancy. For both the unborn baby and very young babies, when they're exposed to frightening and fearful experiences, there's a physiological response in the body where more cortisol is released into the bloodstream, and that has um, a negative um, outcome on the neural pathways in the child's brain. Abusive men will quite often use tactics that are deliberate tactics to disrupt her relationship with the child. He might do certain things like um, deliberately put her down to the children. Um, and then he's got lots of ways where he might interfere that are less obvious. So preventing mothers perhaps um, responding to ill, frightened or upset children. And that leaves children in a very confused place about um, how they connect with their mother and how they perceive their mother. It makes those children feel unsure or uncertain about their mother being a secure base that they can go to. But equally, children will also feel sadness about what's happening to their mum. They will want to be protective of their mother. And that carries risks for children who intervene because obviously there's a risk to themselves being caught up in whatever the incident is. And I think, you know, although you're going to have lots of emotions around sadness and um, fear, in association with that, you're, you're definitely going to have anger. And um, it's quite hard to work out in your mind as a child about that sense of responsibility. So I think that makes it very difficult for children to connect and talk to their mothers. In terms of the abuse, there's got to be high levels of fear and children will adapt their behaviours. Irrespective of the violence, fathers are really important to children and they don't leave the emotional landscape of their child. And one of the most helpful ways to help children um, make sense of that is to try and separate his behaviour from the person. Particularly for younger children, I think um, they live in a state of confusion because they don't understand what's happening in the adult relationship. That manifests itself for many children quite often in their behaviour. So for young children, you may see them um, acting out. Um, their behaviour becomes more challenging. We would also see regressive behaviours with those children and it has impacts in school. Academic attainment might fall. Children are anxious about going to school and leaving mum at home. One is obviously to protect children and keep them safe. The second is to support mothers in doing that job of protecting children and keeping them safe. And the third is to um, hold abusive men accountable for their behaviour, but to also give them opportunities for change. My advice would be to use simple language. Simple is best. Is this something that's happened in your family? How did you feel when that was happening? Who helped you when that happened? Um, have you ever spoken to anyone about it? How scared were you? Did you have a place to go and hide? Did anyone ever hurt you when things like this happened at home? They're simple questions. Um, and children, even of a very young age, are well able to ask those questions if they're paced at an appropriate pace for them. There'll be many instances where perhaps professionals are working with families and they, they're kind of picking up indicators that something's amiss. If you suspect violence, I think you need to ask the question. Obviously, how you ask that question is very powerful. So if the question's couched in a way that um, conveys to that mother or child that you understand about these things, they're more likely to be able to respond to you. If you're bumbling and uncertain in yourself, that doesn't instill confidence in a child to open up to you. Um, children want to hear straight talking and to think the person I'm talking to knows what they're on about and I can talk to this person. Um, you need to keep the child or if it was a woman, informed about what your intention is to do at every stage of that process and to be clear about what's going to be confidential and what's not going to be confidential. 
If you've got a disclosure where the child has been exposed to potentially um, life-threatening severe violence, without a doubt there is a duty to report. Um, it's in the less obvious cases that I think people become more uncertain or confused about what they should do. But for every child who's exposed to domestic violence, there is a safeguard in responsibility and it must be discussed within that organisation. So even though children have been exposed to quite um, scary, fearful events where they themselves may have been targeted or hurt or caught up in the abuse, they still have ties of love and affection towards that abusive father in the way that they have to their mother. Um, and there isn't a simple answer to it because some children exposed to violence will express um, quite clearly a wish that they do not want to have contact with their father and equally you'll have children who express a wish that they do. I think in the main, children should be given an opportunity to connect with fathers, um, but if it's unsafe to do so, I think people need to be brave enough to say